What's going on, y'all? So happy to be here with all of you magical, beautiful people, including myself, because I'm magical. <laughs> um, my name is India Moore. Um, and who are you guys? Where, who are you? Sorry. Go ahead, um, yeah. I'm Gavin Rayner uh, I go by Rayner. Um, I'm an electronic musician. I'm the synth player in LCD Sound System. Um, did you want me to say something about what I'm doing right now? Yeah. Uh, I'm currently on tour with Nancy Wong, the keyboard player from the band, as the ladies of LCD Sound System, US tour all across America. So come see us, come dance. I will see you and I will be dancing. Uh, my name is Jamie Wilson. I just came out with my newest single called Everything Is New. And it's actually a duet with myself on uh, my voice pre-transition and now, so I'm super excited about it. Hey. Hey. Awesome. Thank Congratulations. You. I'm Mila Jam, the only one, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm a pop star and a musician and singer-songwriter, uh, singer-songwriter. And my new album is called Bruised. It just dropped, and it's dedicated to all the trans women of color that have been murdered. And uh, I also have a single called Better Days, which is a, a dance groove, a summer jam that's playing on the radio currently in Germany. So um, yeah, check me out, Bruised and Better Days. Bruised and Better Days. Yo, what's poppin', y'all? It's your girl, Morgan DuPont. I'm a single rapper songwriter from New York City. Um, I do have a single I'll be releasing called Five on November 2nd, so please check that out. It'll be on all streaming platforms, and I am currently working on a secret project, so um, something like an EP, so I'm really excited about it. So, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Secret. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Well, um, trans and gender variant visibility is so important, just in general. Um, but pressing times like these, our voices, visibility, and involvement in all the things has never been more essential. So thank you to each of you for being here um, so very much and daring to create. I've always believed art as a, as a medium is a window to the human heart and soul, both for the creator and the person receiving the art. Um, so my, my first question, um, as musicians of trans and gender variant experience, what inspires you to create? We'll start with you. Whew, what inspires me to create? Um, I, for me, creativity is very much a spiritual mm. uh, act. So, mm. you know, it's, it's, that's my inspiration. Um, comes from spirituality and it's also so much a part of just like how I take care of myself mm. is to be connected and to let that express itself through music. For me, definitely like life experiences um, help inspire my music. It's like my outlet. So anything good, bad, or anywhere in between just comes out through my music and it's like my therapy. Honestly, pop culture, anything that has to do with, um, you know, music, um, movies, uh, TV shows, anything that's sort of relevant at the time I'm inspired by. And then it's just always about me reflecting on how that affects me um, and how my voice could be heard uh, around that. But spirituality as well, things that um, I just feel like I'm connected to, the journey, the struggle, the, um, I mean, it's all encompassing. But yeah, so many different things, definitely lots of pop culture influence. Mm -hmm. For me, I would say uh, it's therapy. <laughs> you know, it defi it's definitely something that I have utilized for a very long time to um, channel my emotions. And um, I do, you know, hope to inspire um, other girls like me to not just, uh, just being, you know, be categorized under a label of just being a trans artist, but just to be seen as an overall artist because I think that's what I do and that's who I am. And, um, you know, I think that the artistry just comes from passion, just true passion. And when you think about it when you wake up and when you think about it when you go to sleep, you know, you just, you have to do it. You know, you have to go for it. And you can't let any, any identity or any categorization or anything of that sort stop you from doing your thing. So I just want to be real. I want to be authentic and I want people to see me for that and to, um, you know, just relate with, you know, who right I am on. and you know, all mm. that. That's really interesting. Um, can you talk, you want to talk a little bit more about why you just want to be seen as an artist rather than being seen as like a trans artist? Well, I mean, honestly, okay, first of all, I, I, I do want to say that I do appreciate, first of all, you know, the visibility, you know, with like, you know, Billboard Pride and, um, I, you know, uh, 
iHeartRadio Pride and all of that stuff. And um, it's definitely bringing visibility to artists like us that are in our experiences. But I just feel like, you know, um, you know, in society, you could just see how sexualized society is that, mm -hmm. you know, genitalia would be even a factor to anybody's artistry of any sort. And I just feel like, um, you know, obviously, like, you would want to know what's between a person's legs or wh who a person is, trans or not, you know, by just, you know, uh, wanting to reproduce or have a child or to want to have sex. But why can't artists just be artists and not have to, you know, why do people have to be glued to this kind of not like societal norm of thinking about label. what's between your legs? Yeah, I you like know, it. She's just, going in. She's going know, right into it. Let's get into it. You know, Come on. it's transparency. I want to be, you know, I think that, you know, it's just like I want people to look at my craft and I want people to admire my craft, you know, and um, enjoy my craft opposed to just being like, oh, um, she's trans and be more intrigued by my trans identity because this is a part of who I am and I'm not ashamed of it at all by any means. But... I feel like it's not, um, my trans identity n isn't necessarily what drives me to do my music, you know? Right. I just wanna, I think that it's important for us to be normalized in society as trans people and as artists um, so overall. Much. And you know, that's just how I feel. Can yeah. I piggyback that? Yes, I wanna please. add to that. I agree with you, but I do think that it's a balance. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I know as a marginalized person of color, just as a woman of color, as a woman mm -hmm. of color, that happens to be trans. Yeah. Those things I can't really escape, and those things are gonna sort of follow me for the rest of my life, and that's sort of the pact that I made with myself. So I'm okay with that, and I'm okay with me, and I think when you're okay with yourself in those spaces, however someone else receives that, that's really not my job. It's my, my job is to just focus on the work and focus on being me and doing what I do. And I really believe that the spiritualness connected to that, or the spirituality, is mm -hmm. that it will lead me and it'll protect me and it'll take me forward in the way the universe wants me to go. Mm. So if someone's like not gonna feel me because they know I'm trans, that's really, that's not, I can't really say anything about that. That's their mm. issue with that. Right. But I feel like there are people out there who will embrace us for being artistic beings on top of being trans. And now we're living in a trending setting. I'm not trending, I'm not a trend, but being trans is a trend in, in the media and in um, you know the entertainment industry right now, it's just, it's glamorized and everyone wants to be connected to the next trans person. Right. So I'm just saying, I've always been an artist. I'm sure you've always been an artist. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've always been an artist. And you've just been struggling to make that happen for yourself. And it's just important to be able to see the balance and to see that it's important to be who we are, but at the same time, it doesn't have to be everything. Right. It's just a facet. You know? And yeah, that both of you just like, you speak to how just incredulous it is that we constantly have to filter ourselves through the gaze of cis people mm -hmm. you know whenever mm -hmm. we want to do anything in this world so i totally i i completely i'm on the same boat <laughs> <laughs> yes um I so like I, I just i would just want to say like i i just feel like you know to me personally mm -hmm. though like like i said i am not unashamed of who I am this is who I am and I was screaming loud especially now in days like this is where we all our voices need to be heard and and they need to see that you know there are trans people that do music and yeah. that act and that do you know that do it all you know but at the same time I just feel like it, it, it just it bothers me I can't help but to be bothered that the focal point is you know like like you know what's between my legs or who, who I am as yeah. an artist because that's not what I want that's not how I right. want to be seen I don't want to just be seen you know you don't go around and introducing a, a doctor who so happens to be a transgender as this is um doctor trans you know you, you just right. don't you don't introduce we want to be recognized right. as the artists that we are and not be defined by our genders or you know like our races or like mm -hmm. our our like you know any anything you know any are we existential that unique? circumstance are we really uh, listen i think that in our uniqueness i have to just say uh, say i feel like there's <coughs> uniqueness in us and all of us individually because of our soul because of our hearts because of our purposes we all have divine different divine purposes in this world but um i feel like you know like i'm not i'm not that unique because if i, if I was that unique i'll be the only trans person on this earth you know so i feel like there's plenty i i think it is normal it's okay there's trans people you know that right. there are artists but we should I also agree, be you know and i feel your your point about being unique but my motto is just be dope and right. just be you and it really out. is that yeah. simple like everyone's got something even the cis people that are you know have things sort of laid out for them and the privileges are all there they're dealing with their own issues of how you know they can one up themselves or level up or whatever right. it's like the struggle is real for everybody it is. and it yeah. might be even more real for us but i'm just here to say like be dope do you and turn it out and make it fierce thank you like, so much ladies this is really insightful yeah. and really important um i hope y'all got that <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm wondering, 
How has music helped you in your life? Wow, I mean, so many ways. I mean, for me, like growing up, music was kind of everything. Before mm. I found other, before I found other people to connect with, before I found my spirituality, music was just everything. Mm. And I think that had a lot to do with that. Music was a place that where I could explore all kinds of other ways of thinking about things, of ways that like different musical elements could relate to each other. It was it's such a beautiful medium, I think, because it has. Uh, it's it's abstract in so many ways, but it's also emotional. It's v it's visceral. It's in your body. It makes you want to move. You know, it touches it touches your emotions. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it was an incredible place to just go and be in music, be in creating music, be in experiencing music, and find those places where like um, I could find authenticity of various different kinds. And I mean, it's interesting just to jump off to on on what. Um, Morgan and Mila were, were saying too, like I think it is such an important thing to find that balance mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I, I want to be seen as an artist. I want to be taken seriously. I want to be listened to. I want to be able to touch people. But also I'm aware as a trans person that assimilation is a very limited game. Mm -hmm. You know, just being accepted into the system is not going to help me and other trans people in the long term. You know, that system was created by cis people for cis people. Right. It's like it was also created by white people for white people, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we, there has to be a way, you know, I, that's what I want to find is the way that I can both, you know, do my work, do my art, but also say this is the work of a trans person right. and hopefully change the way that people think about things. Because what's really needed is not just, you know, it's wonderful that there's more trans people in the media. It's wonderful that, you know, <clears throat> that I can turn on the television and see somebody like me. It's amazing I can listen to music by trans people, but that's not enough. Things have to really change, yeah. you know? Yeah. And for me, music was such an important place to get my feet in the ground around that, to feel like, no, I'm right. Like, there is a place where I can go where the things that go on, are going on for me make sense, even though, you know, out in the world, everybody's telling me, no, that doesn't <laughs> make sense. You're born with this genitalia, that means that you're a man. <laughs> When I'm like, I know I'm not a man, <laughs> right. you know, from when I was a kid. Right, and this is not debatable. You know? It is so not debatable. Exactly. It is not debatable. I appreciate that. And so how has music helped you in your life? Music has been like a definitely a love-hate relationship for me because growing mm -hmm. up, I started singing like in the church with my mom actually and started writing music. I played piano when I was five for the first time and I like fell in love with it. Um, as I grew up and started realizing who I was, you know, I could write songs about how I was feeling, mm -hmm. but I couldn't show anyone because the household that I grew up in was conservative and very religious and just wasn't accepted, you know? And when I finally did come out, I started my hormone therapy and my voice just like started to go away. And um, I felt like that was the only thing I had at that point because I didn't have my family because they didn't accept me and my friends in my hometown didn't and I just left. Um, and that was like probably the darkest moment in my life, you know, when, when my voice started to go away and I felt like I couldn't create and I didn't have that, that healthy outlet anymore. You had to kind of evolve with it, would you yeah. say? Yeah, I started singing and writing and I kept doing it and I realized, you know, you have to do it because you love it. It's not for other mm -hmm. people, it's for you. And I feel like when my attitude switched, um, that's when I started being able to sing again. And I just mm -hmm. do it now because I love it and I love, you know, sharing it with other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. <coughs> and what about you? That was beautiful. <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. I uh, grew up in the church, and so music for me was very spiritual. Um, you know, Southern black child with, uh, you know, being in the choir, leading the choir. Mm -hmm. And um, it just, I always knew that music was important to the world. Mm -hmm. I knew music was important for everyone. It's the one thing that, you know, transcends all boundaries you know um we connect through each other through music and so i always just felt like you know watching my idols and and the people that inspired me as i was growing up i always felt like i i can do that and i feel like i didn't find my voice to say that to know that i had something to say um until later on in my life where i was like i was writing and i was like you know my stories matter and 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 one producer I worked with once uh, once upon a time said to me the most important words he was like Mila write from your heart and write the things that matter to you and what will connect is that it's real 
and that will resonate with people. And, you know, trying to create a formula, trying to create something that will speak to people. Sometimes manufacturing these things, it's like, you know, they might become hits and they might get people, you know, bopping and dancing, but the things mm -hmm. that really speak to us are the things we think no one wants to hear. Mm -hmm. You know, the story that no one wants to hear about, about the abuse, about the, you know, toxicity in relationships, about not being self-empowered and not being motivated to live your truth and live your life and being authentic. And so I focus that energy on that. And so, mm -hmm. I just wanted to connect the dots of like the thing that I love, which is music, with telling a story and mm. being a storyteller to to hopefully one day, you know, when people dig up what I've done, you know, they can they can be inspired by that and say, look at her, look at what she did. Um, and just and, and sort of carve out my own path um, with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I dig that. First of all, you oh. all are so beautiful and I really appreciate being here right now. I really oh, do. Yeah. Uh, How's you music know, helped you? Everything that they said and uh, I also feel rejection. Um, I, I had a lot of people tell me because of my trans identity that you know that I was not gonna go anywhere. Or they're not gonna, nobody's gonna ever take you seriously. Nobody's gonna ever want to produce, you know what I mean, anything for you. Nobody's gonna ever want to write with you. Nobody's gonna ever want to do anything for you. Mm -hmm. And um, just like you, I had kind of like a love hate relationship because I know that you know, like growing up performing art schools and all of that stuff and being in the arts and just having already that passion instilled in me and coming from a family where my brother, he's a rapper, my, my you know, my sister, she's a, she's a poet and she's a singer. And like, yeah, you know, I come from that kind of like, you know, family. It, it was always a passion of mine, but I also did feel a bit insecure with, um, I guess the tone of my voice because mm. I, 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 I mm. was insecure with whether it may sound How girly or not yeah exactly you know. and um you know and i just you know learned that you know i had to be authentic to myself and then all the notes that i would that i would get was just kind of like a you know a push it was a kick in my booty to just kind of like you know to, you know just it, it's like i feel like i have something to prove you know mm -hmm. and not only for myself but for for my community mm -hmm. but um but through my art you know so i you know i just feel like now i'm in, in a point in my life where i'm just i guess more um i'm trying to be involved in my community i i wasn't that involved in my community um you know growing up you know due to many circumstances but i just feel like now i want to be a part of that um and i know that you know I, i'm a little different from a lot of girls um and will not um when it comes to my perspective on things but one thing that um you can never deny is art and mm. you know music and music like you said it, i mean it's just so influential and it, it, it really shifts and changes everything you know mm -hmm. and and um it's a motivation for a lot of things you know and it just can i add one uh, thing too yes, please. i think this is great too what you both said it's um about the conflict but it's so beautiful the growth that we go through as human beings uh, especially human beings that have transitioned and transformed in ways that are just not you know uh considered normal to a lot of other people uh, you know that the, that's the journey and I felt the same way at one point in my career I was like well what about how I sound and if I'm sounding like this and if I should sing higher and if I should sing lower mm -hmm. and then I'm like but the musician in me wants to like learn my instrument and I want to get mm -hmm. into like the lessons and knowing knowing what I can do with my lows and my highs mm -hmm. so what anyone says about like oh her voice can get really deep or it can go very high it's just like that's every singer that's like our, yeah. that's beyonce that's you know aretha that's like you know especially for as a woman as a woman women's voices are so vast and we have this idea and this construct that a woman's voice has to be this exact specific thing mm. you know and it's like how i how i um process when someone says oh she looks like a man or something like that now it's to me it's like men are calling women men even women that are not Right. Trans. I mean, look and at Grace like, Jones, right? So I'm like, Which it's not even through. like personal for me anymore. It's like, I don't even know what you're going through, but like, I'm over here going to get my latte and I'm right. going to go to my rehearsal. <laughs> right. And, you know, and I'm just focused in, in, in a different way. I'm just focused on me. I'm focused on the connection to me. And like, it's amazing. Like, the way, the way that you're doing something like singing with yourself. Why didn't I think of that? I'm like, <laughs> 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 I wish I would have thought of that, but that's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Real quickly, I just wanted to ask y'all because I was thinking about how um, not to uh, not to go back into the, the earlier uh, conversation that we were having about our trans identities being projected on our art. But like, um, you know, the way, you know, trans artist, trans actor, trans musician is used, it's almost like we're making trans music or like we're mm, making that's trans, exactly my, yes. you know, we're, tra we're 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 taking only trans roles, you know, as actors or whatever artistic occupation we feel, what kind of singer are you? What kind of musician are you? Wow, that's deep. Um, trying to like fit that in a little bitty box. <laughs> I'm, 
I'm a growing musician. Mm -hmm. I love pop music. I was raised on iconic Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, J-Lo, Whitney Houston, Britney Spears. Mm. Those are things that I really love and I'm passionate about. But I also love Nina, Nina Simone. Mm. I love Nika Costa. Mm. I love um, just soul singers, R&B singers. I love, you know, R&B from the 90s, SWV, TLC, like all of that. Monifa. Like I love a lot of different genres. Mm. And I feel like uh, artistically, if you follow me, I'm going to do a lot of variations of a lot of stuff. I'm going to have some bubblegum pop stuff. I'm going to have some soul searching stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just want to kind of grow through that. And I think that's the arc for me is like the different faces, you know, the different faces of what it is in my mind to be a, a popular figure and a pop star or a pop icon. Um, I do feel like as an artist, I want to grow more into a base of like speaking truth to music. Um, speaking about real experiences mm -hmm. and um, just speaking from my heart and singing from my heart. So I think I've been working more on that. So but that's really what I, I appreciate that. That's yeah. It's it's really hard um, to uh, put ourselves in a in a in a, in a box. And I also feel like trans like people. the thing to me is like I've heard our, I've heard producers and labels kind of say like we don't want to do gay music. We don't want to hear gay music or this sounds too gay or whatever. I also feel like trans that's really like we're sort of on the precipice of something different there really is no like trans music right like what is trans music sound exactly like? there's no actual archetype for that so right. people i haven't heard anyone say to me like that sounds too trans i can't i can't play that on my radio right so i don't really know what that's like yet exactly I mean, someone might start doing that and i'm like I, i'm not ready for that but like right. you know so what about you what, what kind of um well, art musician would you consider yourself really quickly um well i feel that um i i definitely uh, agree exactly with, with what she said in regards to what well, I I, th I think that pop is just a construct. I feel like pop can be so many things. Mm -hmm. and I've, I've I've been inspired from a very yeah you know I was born in ninety two but Yay. I you know I am but like I've always been like you know uh, inspired by a lot of like eighties uh, nineties pop culture um, freestyle music and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So I always like to inc incorporate those kind of synthesis and um, mm -hmm. you know um, you know kind of instruments kind of you know that sound like that. But um, anyhow, uh, I just feel like. You know, I, I pop can be so many things, you know, and I'm, I'm like, you know, just experimenting with my sound right now. And uh, I'm just an artist, you know, I just, right. you know, and honestly, like, I, I totally get exactly where you're coming from, whatever. I, I personally, for me, like, I, I'm just an artist and like, I'm a, that's what happens to be trans, you know, right. and I just really want people to really get that. And like, don't get me wrong, people, you know, there's people that love to flaunt it and, they, and you should, you know, you should be proud of who you are as an artist. But I just feel like sometimes people get, you, can, you can't help but to, you know, like people lose you know, focus on the art when they focus on like, you know, your identity and like, oh, what does this mean? And stuff like that. So I guess, yeah, I'm just an overall artist. That's that's how I identify. I feel like in the same way that love is love, like music is music. I right. think it's super universal yeah. for everyone. And for me, I feel like I'm just like narrating my life experiences. Mm. And I think that showcases a trans experience because just like everybody else, like I've gone through love stuff and ups and downs just like anybody else would. Um, and it's it's great for me to be able to share that, but the root of it is for me and my happiness, and mm -hmm. I think that's you know the important part of music for everyone. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. What about you? Uh, well, I do think yeah. I mean, I do think it's really important for me. Like, I find genre highly pro problematic as a right. concept, and mm -hmm. I think it's always important to trouble that. But I will mm -hmm. say, like, to keep for brevity, I'm a composer of experimental electronic music. Mm -hmm. Yay. All right. So, uh, what do you want people to see in you when they hear your music? Wow, <laughs> I, that is such a great question. Um, it's it's a, it's you, you are that's the signature of you. Yeah. Whatever you what create, people, it's your signature. What do you want people to see you, in you when they hear your music? Um, depth, complexity, mm. um, experience, ancestry. Mm. Um, spirituality. Um, I think for me, especially of those things, like complexity is really one of the most important things. You know, I'm, I'm not just a complex person because I'm trans, but my transness does add complexity to me, right. complexity to my identity. And I think that's such an important part of what, um, you know, I want I want to use my art to bring into the world is is like things are always way more complex. Right. You know, they're always way more complex. Human experience is so complex, mm -hmm. um, 
and so that's what that's what yeah I yeah i feel that so it's so important to say like because i think like our, our experience as gender variant trans people um uh contribute uh, it, 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 that those are the things that contribute to the art that we create that people appreciate yeah and know, i think so. liberation really yeah. lies in an acknowledgement of how complex human experience right. is yeah and like going off of that i just want people to see it a part of themselves when they hear my music mm. i want them to be able to relate to me because it humanizes everyone you know mm. it humanizes us as transgender individuals but like you know i've had artists where i listen to like sia is one of my favorites how she writes uh, her lyrics titanium was like my song when i came out like that song held me down and i don't even know her but i feel like i know her because yeah. i saw a part of me in her you know so mm. that's what i'd hope for in my music I love that. That was great. Um, I would just say light. Mm. I want people to feel, to uh, hear, to uh, heal, and to be empowered and to be inspired by the light that I can bring forth mm. with my journey and my struggles and my experiences and my awakenings. Um, yeah. And a good time at times, mm, just yes. to feel good and um, to enjoy, you know, to be careless and carefree. Coming from the hood, you know, being born yeah. and raised yeah. in New York City, I lived in foster care. <laughs> so when people ask me, where are you from? I always say New York City because I lived in every borough that you could think of. But I was born and raised in the Bronx, to be exact. But coming from that standpoint, uh, I have thick skin. <clears throat> so I, I, I like to, you know, I want the world to see me as unapologetic because I'm really, I, I really am unapologetic, you know. And, um, you know, I have no remorse. You know, I, I, I just do what I want to do and I experience what I experience and I like to write about it in my music. And, uh, you know, I just, yeah, and I'm also, you know, I, I want people to know that, you know, that our vessels is, um, you know, our, this, this is my vessel, this is my body, and I can do whatever I want with it. And I can be sexy, and I can be, you know, whatever, you, you could call me a slut, whatever you want to call me, I don't care, you know, because I know who I am at the end of the day. So I just want, yeah, I just want people to just like, um, when they see me and when they hear my music, I want them to just be, f feel that, you know, just that strength in me, because, you know, I'm, I really am a fighter, and I fought all my life to be where I'm at today. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm truly unapologetic, and I really don't give up what anybody has to say, you hey. know. <laughs> <laughs> give, nope. I don't give up. I don't, don't give, give up. up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much. That was incredible. Oh my god. <gasps> I can feel all the plants and all the leaves and all the the, the beautiful things growing. I'm a plant today. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. Right, okay. uh, In the spirit of growing ivy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I can't sing. That's why I'm not, I'm not here. But um, uh huh. Okay. All right. We covered a lot. That y'all better work. Let us get the cover. Give a round of applause for all this enlightenment. Enlightenment. All right. So. <clears throat> How has being openly transgender impacted your careers as musicians? Uh, I think, I mean, for me, it's been a positive thing, I have to say. Mm. I mean, it's complex. I, mean, I really relate to what, what she was complex. talking about. Is that it's, it's way like, complex. in a lot of ways, it's like suddenly I'm a, that's like my thing. It's like I'm a trans mm. musician. But I, it, it's also just like, it's such a relief. Like, I, I don't know, I, I, th I get a sense it's like this for most people, it's definitely like it for me, but coming out publicly, it's such a relief. It's like I was like carrying, you know, like this incredible amount of weight around and I got to put it down. And so that freed me up in my creativity, that freed me up in my relationships with people. I think so many people were also like, oh, 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 yeah, totally. That makes sense. Um, and so also, you know, I felt like people started to understand my work better and started to understand like what I've been talking about better because they're like, oh, they had a place to put it. Mm. But I, I agree, it's complex. It has both sides, you know, because ultimately, they, uh, you know, I want to, you know, communicate <coughs> with my work and um, create social change through my work. And it, it's just one of these weird things where you put it in a box sometimes. Where it's like, oh, like, oh, that's a great, you know, that's a great piece by a trans woman. Then suddenly it's like people aren't actually paying attention to what it mm. is. But for me, I would say it's it's mostly been a very positive thing, just because I'm so much more free to like 
create and be who I am. Oh, right. And again, you know, I'm not spending 90% of my time trying to like figure out, you know, how I'm supposed to look or whatever. I think for me, like being open in my music about being transgender, mm. um, at first I wasn't open. So I would like go to open mics when I was like 19 and mm. I had only been on hormones um, you know, for not that long, I just gotten my voice kind of back. Mm. And I remember one time hearing someone in the audience go like, is that a boy or a girl? And that really upset me. And I feel like because I wasn't secure yet really with who I was. And that moment that I became empowered enough to say I'm transgender and I'm not apologetic for it. Um, that's when it like took on a whole new meaning for me. And I was able to just be myself and I can perform my music and I don't have that like you said, that weight on my shoulders anymore. Yeah. I'm just going to piggyback with you, too. It's it's a complex situation. I don't feel like I make specifically trans music. I talk about things that are happening, um, you know, in the lives of women uh, as a woman. Those are my experiences, too. Um, cis and trans women have so many parallel experiences in our lives, especially uh, as a binary, you know, straight trans woman of color mm -hmm. it's kind of like I just sing about I think about the blues <laughs> I think about things that you know are just going on in my life and classifying it as trans or not that's like sort of out of my hands um I've had a lot of positive um reactions I would say more so than negative and mm. I think that most people um when if, if when they find out I'm trans or if they discover that I'm trans I think they go like oh okay Oh, okay. And then, like you know, whatever they decide, that's like uh, that's cool, or do her. Right. She's doing her thing, or they're like, this is super dope. This is really cool. And I think that's just how it's gonna be. And I think that's mm -hmm. how it should be. And I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I feel that. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm a type of woman. You know, I, I talk about you know my experiences as a type of woman. Uh, I don't, you know, to be honest with you, I'm not thinking about you know injecting estrogen in my my thigh. I know, right? <laughs> not, Thank I'm you for saying that. Saying, you know, that was <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the answer. I'm just no shame. No, but I say that to say, you know, not that that's not, you know, because obviously that's a lot of our experiences and whatever. But I mean, I just, yeah, I write from a, you know, a person's point of view because my, my my experience isn't that different from any other woman, you know. I I feel like, yeah, you know, there's this there's this focus of that or just like I, a perception that you know trans women are like so vastly different from cis women, and that's mm. not the case. Well, I don't feel that's the case, and my life you know proves that to be i wrote know? a song okay. i took a hormone shot today okay <laughs> <laughs> i mean like really maybe we should just Can start writing my about tea block <laughs> pull back the syringe <laughs> hey um <laughs> to <laughs> our people will be like oh that's amazing to Why our not? wonderful audience i just wanted to open up uh and ask you to please please leave some questions in the comments in the comment tool section mm -hmm. Um, we would love to answer some of them. Any questions that you may have, please feel free to ask. Um, we would love, love to, would love to answer them. <clears throat> so, uh, ooh. Mm -hmm. What do you think the role of the artist is in terms of human and in particular trans rights? Oh, I love this question. Um, I mean, so much, but I guess the two things I would want to talk about, one is to speak truth to power. Mm. I think it's so important. <clears throat> um, and I think artists are in a really unique position to do that. And I think it's, I personally think it's our responsibility. Um, and another thing which uh, I heard like Angela, da Angela Davis talk about so much is just the way that art and creativity are so valuable for like creating new models of thinking, looking at the world, you know, imagining new <clears throat> and different ways that the world can be and using our art to do mm -hmm. that. Um, and for me, it's, you know, our struggles are so connected. You know, I don't think that there can be trans liberation without black liberation, mm. without immigrant justice, mm -hmm. you know, without prison abolition, mm -hmm. all of those things. I don't think that we can have, you know, there is no trans liberation without those things, without justice for indigenous Americans, without reparations. Trans justice is completely linked with all those struggles. Um, and, you know, for me, it's like, I'm just like, show me, God, how I can show up today for my art, for the struggle. Show me the role I can play. Where can I be of service? And like, 
that's the thing for me art it really in creativity it's 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 my channel mm -hmm. you know it's the channel between you know the higher source and and the world out there so i really appreciate that i agree with everything you said um my good friend one time told me a story it's about uh, a lady had a candle with a flame and she passed the flame along to another candle and then they kept passing it and passing it and at the end no one lost the flame i think lifting each other up and empowering one another and being there for everyone not just transgender individuals people of color everyone and um and being there supporting instead of just i think people sometimes you know want to make it to the top and you really you really aren't going to go anywhere if you just focused on only yourself mm -hmm. um yeah all I'm going to say is just like what you were saying about the candle idea, there are people who are putting, what do you call those things where you put the candle out? It's like an actual thing, which is like it's oh. damper. Is it called damper. a damper? Mm -hmm. Or I, I don't know what it's called, but it's like putting the fire out or putting people. And I think there are a lot of people who are in power who are actually doing that right now. Yeah. And we need to be very careful about really showing up for each other and showing the love for each other because that candle passing is like, it's like the forest fires. It's like, there's all these things burning down and it's just happening so rapidly and we need to just stay in the love we need to stay in the love with each other even with our differences and our discrepancies you know you can have beef yeah. with somebody but at the end of the day you can still love them and love their experience and, and what they stand for and um that's what we need more than ever that's so i don't know if that answered the question but that's how i felt after you said that we need to keep lighting the candles with each other yeah. um Right. No, I, so everything they said. That's the thing about being, you know, at the end of the panel. You know? Artists. <laughs> yeah, you, you're like, damn, I want, I want to say that. I, I was trying to say that. You know? But no, I honestly, truthfully, I just, I, I personally, I just feel like I want people to just be inspired to do whatever makes you happy. You know what I mean? And whatever craft it is that, that, you know, brings you passion or brings you fire, just do that thing and do that and go full throttle. You know what I mean? And just... You know, be unapologetic and throttle. yeah, right. uh, music for me, you know, is genderless and the future is too, mm. you know, and you know, I just feel like I don't, you know, that's just, I don't know. That's how I feel <laughs> about it. Plus right. everything they say, all that's the beautiful valid. things that they said. So that's my valid. Um, yo, yeah. You know, and then scarcity because like, it, it's like whenever there's a situation of a demographic of people that have to fight, you know, twice, three times, four times as hard as much as our cis and uh you know even you know eurocentric brethren and sistren and person trend like we it's like really it gets to the point where like anytime one of us hurts it's like the scarcity sm makes the smell of blood smell good mm -hmm. and instead of us coming back you know we we sometimes in situations of scarcity it, it's like you 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 forget that it's not about somebody falling so you can have a faster route up. Mm. It's about all of us holding on to each other and making the way together and breaking open that small space that was created, you know, I for people this, to pass though. through. We are the thing that we all have in common, I think um people who are in power against people who are just trying to love and be loved, mm. we're all fighting. Mm. Everyone's fighting. This is the interesting thing is like the people in power are fighting against others and mm. we're fighting to gain power. Mm. So that's what's constant. I don't think that changed ever in the history of humanity. But I think what I stand for and what we should stand for and continue to stand for is that we're fighting for the good and we're fighting for uh, connectivity. We're fighting for togetherness. Like that's what I envision the future looks like is togetherness, not separatist, not being, right. you know, you being over here away from these people because like imagine how you feel about, you know, being right. around your people and being around people that love you and embrace you and you have a good time. Yeah. It's like, that's what I'm missing from the administration. Um, you know, I want to be connected to my president. I want to be connected to the people who are yeah. running the office, but I just, I can't. So like I'm fighting, <clears throat> You know, I'm fighting the things that they're fight we're fighting at the same time, right. but two totally different fights um, right. and uh, nothing is getting solved. Um, yeah, it's it's it, yeah. The power to impact and the power to have power over ourselves and autonomy over ourselves is so important. And I think like it's like we're fighting to have power over ourselves and, and to have fair impact. But it's like we have to fight the power of dominion, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like against that. And it's so it's such a dissonant, you know, kind of thing. It's so weird. It's yeah. so fractile and odd. But I think love breaks down all those things and makes it all simple. So, <laughs> you know, um, you know, 
What impact do you want to make socially and emotionally on the world through your art? What impact do you want to make socially and emotionally? I know my answer. I so, simply self empowerment. I just I grew up being you know a loner kid in a lot of ways. Uh, I grew up as an only child for a long time before my gorgeous sister was born, and um, I just I feel like it's so important to be self motivated and self empowered. And when you start with yourself, you whatever you're dealing with, you can you can deal with that better. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I want people to take away from my music and from my legacy is um, mm -hmm. self empowerment. Anyone? Exactly. Honestly, yes. I'm, like I said before, I'm unapologetic, and um, you know, I just want people to just you know be authentic and true to themselves, and to do what makes them happy, and to not be confined with what society says you can or cannot do in regards mm -hmm. to career choices, career paths. You know, what I mean, you can be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, you could be a singer, you could be a songwriter, you could be an actress, who, whatever you can want to be. Like, don't let gender de like you know deter you from you know you know reaching your full potential and actually investing in your career or whatever you want to do just do it just do it like what's yeah. stopping you yeah and definitely i think um i i really focus on trans youth because i think they really need people to look up to i know when i came out it was really hard for me to find a trans guy um in the media even so i think just being visible and showing people that we're happy and we love what we do and they can do anything that they want right. to you know mm. I would like to, <clears throat> through my music, create um, a change such that people experience the world and everything in it and everybody in it with respect and care. Mm. Well, thank you. Um, just really quickly, I know this is a really deep question that I'm about to ask, but I just wanted to know a little bit about what your, what your reaction to the announcement that the President Trump's administration um, had made in uh, uh, attempting to limit the definition of gender to be determined only on, and quote, a biological basis that is clear, grounded in science, objective, and administrable. Ugh, it just <laughs> sounds gross, right? It's, it is gross. Mm. I, for me, there were a lot of things going on. I mean, I think also there was both the rhetoric of the administration, but there was also the article, and I think the article was super problematic too. Mm -hmm. I think the headline was so intentionally inflammatory. Yes, come And through. even listed like, oh, it listed trans people as like 1.4 million Americans who opt to live as a gender other than the one they were assigned at birth. Wow. I'm like, I am not opting for this. <coughs> you know, Language. I didn't opt into this. This is taking care of myself. And I think um, there was that. And I've, you know, I've tried even since I was very young and I read like Necessary Illusions by Noam Chomsky to like, develop this relationship to the media where like I know that what they're doing is keeping us scared and at each other's throats oh my god you said <laughs> that thing you said about scarcity makes the smell of blood mm -hmm. smell good that is so important thank mm -hmm. you for saying that mm -hmm. um so that you know a few people can hold, keep holding on to the wealth and the power that's what they're doing but also not I can't turn off and be like oh that's just what it is so I'm not gonna pay attention to it and I think this administration in particular has been a real spiritual challenge to continue to stay engaged but also to not let it make me crazy and it did make me crazy when I saw that article it really upset me it really scared me Sorry. and it was my connection with other trans women and people in my community my spiritual connection that allowed me to recalibrate and be like whoa you know I saw Raina Gossip point POTUS posted the quote from Miss Majors I'm still boop here you know and for her to hear a woman with that much history, a black trans woman with that much history, who is still here, and to realize like, this isn't the first time, you know, that they've tried to like negate us. Right. And there are people who are still around, and there's all kinds of other people that they've also tried to neg negate, and they're still around. <coughs> so there was this, in, you know, initial thing of, um, of being really afraid, yeah. you know? You know, it hit, me, hit me where I live, you know? And then there was a response to of like, what is on my ID? What my genitalia is, you know, how other people gender me, that is not what makes me a woman. Right. You know, I'm a woman because I'm a woman. That's I, the fact. You know what, like all of these things surrounding like arguments about gender, I just think like they don't even really, they don't really care. I think a lot of these things is all about sustaining patriarchy. It is, and, for and sure, it is. It's all about their balls staying heavy. And, and and them, you know, they want their balls, to, their, your balls will never be heavier than our lives. <laughs> Hello, amen, all right? They will never be. 
Um, just really quickly, uh, because we have 15 minutes to go, y'all. I just wanted to say on that, just to piggyback really. Of course. I think it's total gaslighting with a lot of, uh, I think that it's gaslighting and there is the implication to do something about that from their end. But I think uh, we can't, um, we can't like run scared and we can't, you know, go away because we won't go away. And that's the thing is like, we are here and we're going to continue to be here. And we've been here uh, since the beginning of time. Right. And it's, it's very cyclical, but I think we just need to stay focused on continuing to be ourselves and motivating our youth and, and encouraging our youth to still love yourself and be true to who you are and be an authentic. And just to quote one of my sisters really quickly, Ashley Marie Preston, she mm. said something so amazing. Ashley Marie she said when she found out about um, the announcement or, you know, the article and stuff, she just felt like, you know, when you're a parent and you have that one child that's bad as hell, and then you get messages and texts about them at school. <laughs> and it's just like, here we go again. I got a text about Jimmy. Oh my God, Jimmy, why are you acting up? I don't know what I'm gonna do with you. That's how she felt. I felt the same way. I literally right. looked at the article like, what's new? Another day in America, another day being a black trans woman. And like, that it's like, so I'm so real. used to it, but yeah. I'm not gonna get used to being told who I can or cannot be. Right, yeah. And I've, of, we actually have faced that our whole lives. Yeah. That's it's the sad truth. That we're even used, used to it. We shouldn't be used no, to we something shouldn't. like of this nature. Like it's yeah. just at the end of the day we're human. We're all human mm. at the end of the day. And I feel like people just like fe fail to realize that that we're all are equal with flesh, we yeah. blood, we bleed the we shit the same. He's you know? just rallying people to to he's rallying the troops that are like, you know, following and I think that's what that's all about. Yeah, you can't erase a human. You know, I think he thinks of it as a word instead of there's actual <coughs> faces and people behind that word. Yes. Um, okay. So I, I have uh, some some uh, viewer questions um, that I want to ask. <laughs> do you feel like we have been forced to speak on behalf of your? Do you feel like you have been forced to speak on behalf of your community because you are artists? And how can non-Americans help? I'm from South Africa. Oh. I mean, like, you just, ha I mean, personally for me, I'm not gonna even lie, like, when I heard about everything that's going on and, you know, that announcement being made, like, it just made me feel like I was being too quiet. It made me feel like I wasn't really being involved. And it made me feel like, no, like th this affects all of us, you know? So regardless whether you're gonna purchase my track on iTunes or not, you know, this affects my life, mm -hmm. you know? And it affects me to know that it affects somebody else's life too because I'm mm -hmm. truly a, a person who loves people and I'm empathetic to people's experiences, especially when it's like mine. So like, I feel like I have to, like, it's just, it's not, it has nothing to do with the artistry. It has to do with just, you know, humanity and just like what's right, just standing right. for what's right. And, and how do you think, how can non-Americans help uh, Morgan? I'm sorry? Uh, for example, someone from South Africa, how do you think that they can help? I mean, you know, can, can't, okay, question. Can people sign petitions from, from a distance, like outside of the U U.S.? Yeah. There's sign petitions. There, there petitions. are yeah. Sign petitions. Do you know? Um, you know, donate to organizations that are you know close to the LGBT uh, you know community. That's a good word. Um, you Money. know, I mean, yeah. Money talks. Honey. If you have the resources, donate. And that's right. that's it. Yeah, yeah. You got the coin, honey. Stop playing. Yeah. Like no, of course. There's a lot of Please really mention. good, especially grassroots organizations yeah. like TGI Justice, um, Sylvia Rivera Law Project. Trans legal uh, trans defense. Oh no, that yeah, was actually trans yeah. legal defense is a good one. Trans women of color collective. Mm -hmm. um, there's so so many. Uh, Familia TQLM in Los Angeles. Global Action Project, a youth ran organization. And uh, Nitag, Nitag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, Nitag. Nitag is doing so much work out here. Shout out to Nitag for doing so much work in New York City, and um, all over the country also for trans people. Um, also, for anyone in the world, listen to trans people, wherever you are. If you don't know anybody who is trans, consider right. that might be an issue. You, you do. You just with. don't know it. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but at, listen at to trans educate people. yourself about the experiences that yeah. you know. Because I feel like sometimes it's like people know that you know we exist, but do like don't actually have the you know want or desire to actually yeah. sit there and research and learn. You know, even if you you are you know m you uh, don't understand certain things, like you know, I feel like there's a possible way to just like you know broaden your horizons and actually you know and be you know open to learning something yeah. that's a little different from your experience support our work and ask for it where it's not there if you hear about a tv show pose fx for example is a great tv show it's yes, very it educational is. 
and uh, it talks really about is too. it. That's yeah, not even just so a much, plug. It's a good show. So yeah, much is. information. Is. Um, and if it's not available in your region, ask for it. You know, demand it, and it will come to you. Well, I feel like as artists and, you know, even just social media platforms, there's always a responsibility um, because you have the ability to talk to other people and show them, you know, who we are and what they can do, where they can donate. Um, I know, like, when I got the news, I just got done performing at Vegas Pride and, like, I just met a ton of young transgender kids with, like, their trans, you know, their trans flags and stuff and, like, their happy faces and it, like, haunted me when I heard that, like, you know, they're going through school and they're going through so much and they're so young, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I actually, I texted my friend, he's an amazing producer, and like that hashtag that's trending won't be erased. I was like, we gotta write a song about it. Like, you know, articles are great to share and things, but I want people to hear words from transgender people and see their faces. I want them to see this video and hear this music and feel something, mm -hmm. you know, with, with a feeling that's what makes people act. Go vote. Can we all make that happen? Well, can, can we like really like make November a song 6th. like like I make did. a song about about this? I like, did. Won't I be ra you I know. Did. I said we well, won't be raised. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, Jamie started I, it. I just it's I just released it like thirty minutes really ago. Amazing. It just came out. Oh, that y'all make dope. sure you check out his song. Yes. What are your Instagram uh, tags, by the way? Also, like all of your like, what are your social media Instagram handles? Uh, Instagram <laughs> just so we can have our viewers. Gavin Reyna, G A V I N R A Y N A. At Gavin Reyna. Yeah can find everything from there my name is jamie wilson uh, my instagram is t boy t b o y six nineteen fifteen. the day i started testosterone word oh, it's so your girl mila you. jam i'm the only one it's at the mila jam t-h-e-m-i-l-a-j-a-m like you put on your toast and you can follow me at mila jam the mila jam dot com and my albums and all my music are on spotify itunes apple music Amazon and the list goes on and on. Jam. Hello. So my name is Morgan Dupont and you can find me on Instagram Morgan Dupont. <laughs> M O R G I N D U P O N T yes. as in Tom again does M O R G I N D U P O N T. D U P O N T. That's Morgan. Ew. Okay, just really quickly. Um so calls to the Trans Lifeline Crisis Hotline based in Oakland, California more than doubled. And the 24 hours following the news, mm. with 434 calls by mid-afternoon Monday, up from 112 on an average Monday. What has helped you the most, and what advice can you give the tra give to trans youth out there right now? The advice I wanted to give, oh, real don't quickly, do it. I don't have to do it. Uh, it comes <laughs> from my sister Laverne Cox. She says that we must not give up, we must not end the, we must not stop fighting, um, and we must always believe and we must keep going. Um, that really inspires me because, you know, these moments, they come and go, mm -hmm. and no matter what happens here on out, you know, we have to continue on. We have to um, empower ourselves in our community to just, to fight, like mm -hmm. to continue to fight. I think that's an incredible statistic, and thank you for bringing that forward. Mm -hmm. I think it so also indicates the intentionality behind both the policy and the New York Times in reporting it in the way that they did. You know that it is it is you know an attack on our community, mm -hmm. and that it did hit people where they live and scare people. Um, I mean, what has always helped me the most is connecting to other trans folks, especially for me, other trans women. Mm -hmm. Like the strength of a conversation that I have with another trans woman is so deep. Amen to that. High five from over here. Yeah. And that's what we're doing here, too. <laughs> yes, that's what know? we're doing. On, that's what we're doing. <laughs> With our trans brothers, too. Come on. Like. Yeah, it's, oh. it's just for me, you know. Oh. Um, it's so important. And we have so much power together when we talk and connect and, you know, explore our similarities and our differences. And the wisdom. It's so deep. And all our, like, transcestors, it's incredible. That's the other thing I would say, like, you know, first like all my transistors to like look back and see like oh my god these people did so much work they did these incredible things they lived they thrived they manifested mm -hmm. justice mm -hmm. um and also all the other ancestors too because you know this our, our, our american state has not just attacked trans people it's attracted so many attacked 
so many different kinds of people mm -hmm. um and people have survived all the justice we have is because people fought for it mm -hmm. you know it's because people said no no I'm, i've had enough you made sacrifices yeah. took risks spoke out yeah. so that's where i go you know for hope yeah. and help I think big motivation too is the people behind us, you know, the younger generation. We want to give them a place where they can just be happy and be themselves. You know, I think it's terrible that someone would have to be scared to be who they are. And I don't think it should be considered brave to come out. You know, this is how we're born. This is who we are. And, you know, I know when I, when I make posts and I think of doing things, I, I always think of the younger generation. Mm. Um, well, thank you. First of all, I just want to thank you so much for being here because there is um, such a lack of visibility for trans men right now. Mm -hmm. And um, it disturbs me when I think about it. Um, and I want to investigate and do a little more research as to why exactly that is. Um, because I know that there are just as many trans men as there are trans women. It's not like there are more trans women, yeah, okay. you know. Um, so uh, I just really appreciate your visibility and your presence here so much. Thank um, you very just much. Wanted to say and that. you look handsome today. Yes, Thank you. You're all very beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And you do look handsome today. He does. He handsome. <laughs> I'm, I'm blushing. Just like I'm blushing. I think so too. Today. Today though. <laughs> just today. No. Not at all. <laughs> Um, really quickly, what can our cisgender allies do to help us in this current fight? Stand with us. Yeah. Go to rallies with us. Um, tell your friends. Post about things. You know, don't be shameless. Uh, don't be shameful about you know supporting us. I've had friends call me and text me, check in on me, and that's wonderful and that's beautiful. And I have the tendency to think that I'm okay. And I want to say like we need to reach our youth. We need to reach the kids. We need to support each other. Um, our allies need to support the kids growing up too who are going through a lot of identity issues and, and discovering who they are. Yes. Like, just show up. Please show mm -hmm. up. And I think like being a voice too, you know, my friend who just recorded that song with me, Jerry Robinson, he decided to go on the track with me. Like he is a voice for us. I think allies can speak out just as much as we can, mm -hmm. not to embody a trans person, but to say, hey, I stand behind this person. And you're, you're, you know, you're screwing with me too if you screw with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Quick mm -hmm. question, did you see, I just want to ask you, did you guys see, it's not a trans issue specifically, it's about, it's a, a, a high school, um, two high school friends, guys, um, one gay guy and one straight guy. And the gay guy asked his straight best friend to go to the prom with him, and uh -huh. he accepted his request, and he's oh. taking his gay best friend to the prom. Oh, that's And so it's sweet. like the most beautiful thing, because he's like so like showing up. Take trans standing, people to the prom, y'all. Standing next Seriously. to him, and like I was, Seriously. I literally teared up, I cried, because I was like, oh my God, like that was so wonderful. And everyone in the school, like they did like a reveal, and um, he like walked down the street, and he like, got his hand and it was just beautiful it was like <clears throat> um uh thank you say one thing thank y'all so much yes please like please. i just want to say like we don't want to see your toast and your avocado we don't want to see your, yes. your breakfast you know what i mean your like breast cleavages use on, your we platform don't care about right. your cleavages. use your platform <laughs> toast, but you know avocado. what i appreciate about on these Instagram, times though is that see. that true colors shine through and you really see yes. who's really there for the community and uh -huh. who's really not you know what i mean so, watch our so seriously if you're really for the community really for equality and human rights including our rights then you know actually you know stop posting them avocado and toast and, and <laughs> post something real and okay? post about what's going on to trans people y'all want to sit around and be entertained by us but y'all don't want to speak for us mm -hmm. really fast really really fast y'all what in two seconds because we got 60 seconds less it is 60, 60, 60 if you could send a message to donald trump uh, and his administration what would it be in five seconds please 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 <laughs> please we're being nice here you, you no, more like please please no for real more like a sassy please. um i think i would say like you can't erase a human being i know i said that before but you really can't we're people um and our lives matter we're not disposable yeah boy bye <laughs> how dare you how dare you think that your life is more important than ours how dare you like how dare fuck you <laughs> Uh, please, boy, bye. How dare you fuck you? Your life is not <laughs> more valuable um, in, in nature than our own. Thank you all so much. This was an incredible thank panel. You thank, us. You us. thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. I feel the I love. Thank you, Billboard. Yes. Shout out to Billboard. Thank you, India. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much.